Hi guys, Kentucky Dolly Mom here. And today I thought I would do a short video as I'm working on full body silicone nori. I thought I would just do a short video of me painting her modeling. And you take part A and part B silicone and you put equal amounts for your paint. Try to make sure equal amounts of your A and your B silicone. I use um, EcoFlex 10 because it's a soft silicone. When it cures, it won't hard. Uh, if you use the wrong silicone to paint with, uh, it can actually um, harden your silicone. So you don't want to have a nice soft silicone baby and then harden it up. Now normally I use toothpicks but since the uh, <laughs> shelves are getting pretty bare around here in the stores I went four different places today trying to find paint brushes, cosmetic sponges that I used to paint with and um, toothpicks. I actually found only the sponges. I ended up getting them at the dollar store because they were the only ones that had the latex free without any dyes and proteins. So like I said, normally I would be using uh, a toothpick, uh, but because I wasn't able to find any in the store and I'm completely out, I have to make shift a little bit uh, because I do want to get her done. I um, I am using smooth lines, um, silly peg paints, and I am mixing uh, two colors together. I'm using a bright red and a blood, which. Uh, if you're using FX or um, uh, Psycho Paint, I think it might be the umber color, but in the Silly Peg, it would be the blood color. So I mix the bright red with the blood to give me just um, a very light red or, or a darker light red. I don't want it to be bright red and it needs to be extremely light going on the baby. One thing you need to know uh, if you're thinking about painting, uh, less is more. Less is better. It takes very little pigment. It takes very little silicone um, to um, paint these babies. Um, if you, um, you know, put too much silicone in, too much paint in, it's too thick, uh, that's, that's not a good thing. Uh, I use naphtha to thin. You have to put a thinner in your paint and silicone mix. So I use naphtha. Some people use mineral odorless mineral spirits. Uh, there's several things you can use. Uh, when I first started painting silicone, I had a lot of support from some top-notch uh, silicone artists. And this is what they recommended because it's more of an oil-based um, thinner, which your silicone paints are more of an oil. Oily, not an oil based, but like an oily or uh, silicone. Uh, your silicone paint is oilier, so it's better to use the oilier 
thinner, if that makes sense. So, and we want it to be uh, very, very thin now. When you do the modeling, uh, some people tend to do it just a tad too red. Uh, looks like, you know, red, uh, which that can be fixed too by darkening your red and not having it too bright. But I do it more as a as a wash. Uh, it's not as thinned out as it would be, say, if I was doing some other types of painting layers. Doing the modeling, I like to do it as a very thin wash. Uh, because if I need to add um, some paint, you know, I, I can do that if it's not as dark as I want it when I'm thin. Uh, much easier to add color than to take the color off. So when you put it on, it looks very light, very wet. You can't really hardly see the color. When it cures, it does uh, darken. So you don't want to put the color on and see the shade that you like and oh, there it is, that's what I want. Because when you, uh, when it cures, it will be darker. So you want to make sure that you put it on lightly. Uh, if you look at it and think, I like that, but it could be a little darker, it will be when it, um, when it cures. And I should have showed you first. Uh, I took a cosmetic sponge and I put little holes in it to give it a pattern. I normally use sea sponge, but all they've got in the stores are synthetic sea sponges right now. Not uh, had any luck being able to find uh, the all natural sea sponge. And then I just dab it in my paint and I make sure it's not real, real wet. A little dog. on my paper. Because you just want to make sure that you're only putting the color as dark as you want it to be. And we're going to start here with her head. Giving her just pounces I'm going to take the sponge and pounce it on. You don't want to pounce it hard because if you pounce it too hard, then that will take your texture of the modeling look away. So you don't want to pounce super hard. This may be too light, so when she cures, I may have to go back over her again. But I would rather it be too light and have to add than I would be too. Because when the silicone cures, what it's actually doing is the, it's cured when all of the thinner evaporates. And then your paint actually becomes part of the silicone itself. So that's why uh, if you want to repaint a silicone baby, you have to um, sand them, which is torture to the silicone. It can really, really damage the silicone. And you don't want to do that. So. I'm not a big fan of repainting, even though I've done, done quite a few. Um, so, you just you want to make sure it's nice and thin. Uh, very, very light. 
lightly done. So as I said, you will be able to go back over the baby if you want to add a little bit more modeling. And it's easier to tell what color you've got after, after the cures. This is Nori, full body sculpt. She's by Jennifer Price of Silicone Studios. She's poured in a super soft blend silicone, and she's also got the jelly belly, which gives her a coochy little, squishy little belly. Just pooches right out like a real newborn. Now, I could have gotten her uh, with the drink and whip system. Uh, I chose not to. Um, and it wasn't because of price, because the price actually uh, was the same with or without the drink and whip. So, uh, my intention at first was to keep this little lady uh, for myself. And I tried to personally kind of play. Uh, but I have seen another baby, <laughs> and we all do that. We all do it. We find one we love, can't wait to get it home, and then the next thing you know, there's somebody else out there. And another one. Oh, I just saw this one. It's beautiful. And you know, we can blame our sculptors for that. I mean, you know, they do continuously bring us gorgeous sculpts. And sometimes, when you think you've picked the perfect baby food, a new sculpt comes out. And it's like, oh, we have ready to have that one. So, she will be available for adoption once she's finished. Uh, and that's why I didn't order the drinking wet because for my personal collection, I'm just not a fan of the drinking wet. I'm 64 years old. I've changed many, many of my own children's diapers. My great grandchildren, I mean, my grandchildren's diapers and we were foster parents for years, so I've gotten um, plenty of diaper changing ex experience under my belt. I don't want to have to do it with the dolls. That is one of the beautiful things about having these babies. You can change their diaper if you want to. It's not something that has to be done. So, I mean, for people that want the full experience, they enjoy the, the drinking wet. I, I'm in no way, shape, or form criticizing that. Uh, I think that's wonderful that they've actually got, uh, you know, a drinking wet system to offer uh, to their customers. So, people that want the drinking wet, that's wonderful. Uh, for my personal, uh, collection, I didn't want to drink it yet. So, she is not a drink of wet. But she does have the jelly belly. She's about two, two and a half pounds and 14 inches. And I mean, she just, I do have a video of her details before I started painting on my channel. If you haven't watched it, you might want to check it out. She is a, a little pretzel. I mean, she will just curl up in your arms, uh, she's just got the flexibility and the softness is just amazing. Her little head just turns so nicely so she can lay on her belly and have her head either side 
without suffocating, looking like she's about to suffocate. Well, guys, believe it or not, that's the end of this uh, little segment. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming by and sharing your time with me once again. I hope you've enjoyed um, me working on little Nora. Uh, she will go in what I call the magic box. My dear friend in Sweden invented this little thing, and uh, I told all of my silicone artists about it, so many of them use what my friend named it as well. It's a magic box. And it's actually a storage box flipped upside down. And you just cut a hole in it, put your blow dryer, very high heat, high wattage blow, blow dryer in it, in the lid, and then you just seal it and pop it down. And that gives you um, a quick cure uh, so that I can move on to the next layer. Um, so, uh, that way, you know, it doesn't take quite as long because if you let the silicone layers uh, cure naturally, you have to wait two hours in between each layer. So I can pop her in the magic box for 15, 20 minutes, and when she comes out, once she's cool, I can give her actually another coat. One thing uh, you need to do too when you're doing babies the silicone is you want to prop their mouth open if you're doing the mouth because if it doesn't once the silicone cures it'll seal the mouth shut and way her little head just lays on her little chest I tilt her little head back so her neck and chin is not on her chest so when she's finished curing it's not gonna fuse together uh, so we prop her little head up and uh, so I'm gonna pop her in the magic box and I hope, hope you can see it top just for added support um, so uh, there's the magic box and there's little Nori and it's just like I said a, a storage box with a um, blow dryer I'm trying to turn it to her. Let me see the, there it is. No? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The blow dryer. And I, um, of course, won't, uh, won't leave this um, running, uh, this video running while I'm letting her cure. Uh, for one, it's too loud, and for two, it's a little boy. So, uh, but I want to thank everybody for joining me. I hope uh, you enjoy modeling uh, little Nori, and I hope you have a blessed, blessed day. And of course, don't forget, like, share, and subscribe. We've got to get me to those thousand subscribers so we can do a free drawing giveaway. Once I get to a thousand, guys, I'm going to do a free drawing, and that's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. My 1,000 subscribers will be a nice milestone that I want to share with my community because without you, I couldn't do it. Um, and I want to do a pay it forward, showing my appreciation, and I will do a, a drawing once I have my thousand subscriptions. So, like, share, and subscribe. And please leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Help me get to know you a little bit. Uh, did you find this boring or exciting? Um, interesting? Informative? Uh, rather not see any more. Uh, just whatever. 
you want to say, if you want to say hi, like I said, I would love to comment so I can get to know you. Uh, it also helps to push my videos out. People are liking and subscribing and commenting. That helps YouTube think, well, people enjoy this. I'm going to push it out to others. And the more it gets pushed out, the faster we get to that thousand subscription and that free drive. So, once again, thank you so much for joining me today. Count your blessings. Count your blessings because they're not owed to us. And again, I always wish you a blessed, blessed day. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.